So I should probably be making some type of like holiday themed content or something right now, but really I'm just not that organized. I mean, seriously, you guys should be lucky that you got like that Friday the 13th series in October. I mean, actually, I think I started it in like June or something like that, so I was way off there, but whatever. Be lucky that that shit came out around spooky month because, God, next time you never know, you might get that shit in fucking May or something. But anyway, let's talk about some fucked up families out in the middle of the woods hunting deer and running across bank robbers. <laughs> Whitetail is brought to us by director Derek Presley and stars Tom Zumbro, Jason Cavello, and Billy Blair. A broken family consisting of a father, an uncle, and a son embark on a weekend hunting trip out in West Texas. Instead, they find a mysterious man shot in the stomach and clutching a bag full of money. So Whitetail is a new movie, but it is by no means a new story. We have seen this story time and time again. But just because we've seen it before doesn't mean that it can't be entertaining. That's the question here. Is this movie entertaining? And yeah, it it is, but that familiarity does make it a bit stale at times. Now, first of all, the movie does a really good job of setting up its characters and making them really relatable and interesting. It spends a lot more time than most other movies like this telling us about these characters, their backstories, and everything that's going on with them. It sets up a lot of subplots about what's going on with these guys, and the stuff that it sets up, you really want to know more about. It's some interesting stuff. In fact, about the first half of the movie is is devoted to setting these characters up and I really like that. Unfortunately, the second half just kind of forgets about all that shit. In the second half of the movie, it really starts to focus on the conflict of finding this bag of money and the bank robbers trying to find them. And it kind of seems like all that stuff that they did to set these characters up earlier in the film was just there to get us to care about these characters so when something bad starts to happen to them, then it really means something to it. And sure, I get that. That's why we get character development in these kinds of movies, but it is like painfully obvious here. Typically when they do that, we still get a little bit more of the characters and what's going on with them. But the movie never comes back to any of it. It sets up all this stuff, all this conflict within this small group of guys, and then when the shit goes down, it's like all that stuff is just thrown to the wayside, and there's just none of it there. I'm just sitting there like, why did you even give us this to begin with? Why go so deep? Do we care about the characters? Sure we do, but we care about them so much that we want to know about these things that we never get resolution to. That being said, the conflict in the second half of this movie was interesting. I had a good time with it. It was never too over the top and grandos. It was very grounded. You've got these three bank robbers. They're looking for this money that these three guys out in the woods have. There's your conflict. We get some pretty tense moments between them, though these moments, pretty much like the entire movie, are fairly predictable. And that was a bit of a letdown because this is a fairly well-made, entertaining movie, but there's just no surprises here. There is nothing that you don't know is about to happen. Any tension that is in this movie is not knowing what's going to happen, but necessarily when it's going to happen. The end of the movie is kind of a downer too, which, I mean, that's okay. I've seen plenty of great movies that had downer endings, but it just seems like recently I've seen a lot of movies with real downer depressing endings, and I'm just kind of like, shit, man, can we get at least somewhat of a pseudo-happy ending at some point in one of these movies? I can't really hold that against this movie just because I've chosen to see a bunch of depressing ass fucking movies recently, but just know that going in that the end of this movie is not full of rainbows and unicorns. Manisa Prozac or something by the end of the week. The villains of the story are pretty interesting, though one of them does become a bit cartoonish by the end. He's not too far out there, but when compared to how grounded the rest of the movie is, and as heightened as this character is by the end of the movie, it does stand out just a bit. I guess it kind of works, but you do take notice of it. He does seem a bit over the top. Nothing too crazy, but a bit. Overall, the story is pretty straightforward, and and it's definitely predictable, but it's also pretty entertaining. We get some pretty good performances here, nothing that's gonna like blow your fucking mind or anything, but overall, they're all pretty solid. Billy Blair as Jesse stood out maybe just about a hair more than everybody else, but overall, these are some pretty serviceable performances. Not a whole lot of effects work here, we get a couple of practical gunshot wounds and they all look pretty good, but overall, this is a pretty straightforward movie. Though I will say that the way it's shot, the way it looks overall, it looks really nice. That is to say that overall, this is a very competently made movie. Guys, 
Guys, White Tail is a fairly familiar story. I like the characterizations that they had in the first half of the film, but unfortunately in the second half, they just kind of dropped all that and we never got a payoff. The ending, while a downer, is still fairly satisfying and we get some pretty solid performances across the board. And while this movie is probably not going to end up on anybody's top 10 of the year, it is still worth checking out on streaming. Across the street. I wasn't like blown away by this movie, but I was fairly entertained. So if you're looking for some fairly familiar entertainment for the night, then check out Whitetail and I think you'll have a pretty good time with it. So there it is guys, my review of Whitetail. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit the subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you want to help out the channel, check out my Patreon in the description below and become a jarhead and get some of the awesome benefits to go along with that like these guys and possibly join my top tier and become a bad motherfucker like my man Greg C and Dragon Con. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy, Dallas. Why do we kill? It's just what we do. There's a thing that a character does in this movie that I fucking hate. I cannot stand it when characters in movies do this. And that is, at one point, said character gets the upper hand on another character, but he doesn't finish the job. And you can guess what happens as a result of that. And I fucking hate this shit. In movies, all the time, when someone's in trouble, someone's like holding them captive, they get away, and they like get them down to the ground and like knock them out, or knock them down rather, and then they just like stop right there. I'm like, what are you doing? What, what the hell? You've knocked your captor who wants to kill you down to the ground and you just let it go from there. I don't give a shit if you've never taken a life. This person is going to kill you. Take that hammer, that, that bat, that whatever it was you used to get the upper hand and knock them down and bash their fucking head in until you see fucking white meat and their asses ain't fucking moving. Because if you don't, then you deserve what the fuck you get. Man, that really makes me sound violent as hell. I promise I'm really not.